Chiropractors are used very commonly to help with people's back pain and tenseness due to the stress of daily life. Some people swear by them and their tactics. However, chiropractors are not doctors. They do not go to medical school. They do not have degrees from accredited universities. They do not spend time working in a hospital under the supervision of a veteran physician. What is the truth behind chiropractors? Is there any actual help they can offer? I started research on this with a strong negative impression, but my research on this has made me entirely morally opposed to the practice of, and I'm saying this with air quotes, chiropractic medicine. Chiropractic practice began with Daniel David Palmer, a magnetic healer in the city of Burlington, Iowa. If magnetic healer caused you pause already, I understand. It did me too, and we're already getting a glimpse at the mysticism behind the practice. Anyway, one day Palmer meets a deaf janitor named Harvey Lillard. They get to talking somehow, as it's not explained if they wrote their conversation on paper or if Palmer made Lillard lip read. But anyway, Palmer tells Lillard that his deafness is the result of a spinal injury, and he offers to fix the spinal injury. Lillard agrees, and after two treatments, Lillard could hear. Now, I know sign language, and I have communicated with several deaf people, and most people that are deaf are born deaf, or they get sick when they're a, a child, very young, with a high fever, and that's what causes their deafness. I only met one person who became deaf as a result of injury, and it was a head injury. All that said, this already sounds like total bullshit, especially because this has never been replicated since by Palmer or any other chiropractor. I suspect, and this is probably my bias speaking, that Palmer paid Lillard to say this to boost Palmer's notoriety and get people's attention so they would attend his school. But wait, isn't Palmer a magnetic healer? Well, he was, but soon after this story was published, he moved to Davenport, Iowa and opened a school of chiropractic medicine. He also wrote a book on how to manipulate the spine, and his entire practice was based on the belief that disorganization in the body was the cause of all illness. And just so you know, everything I've told you so far was written by three people, two of them chiropractors, and the lead author has a PhD. I just wanted you all to know, I didn't pick some random article that's telling this story. This is the story that actual chiropractors will tell you about how their practice began. Continuing, chiropractors constantly battle against more standard medical treatments to be considered valid, such as vaccines. Anti-vaxxers deserve their own video, but the idea that chiropractors are against vaccination should be a major red flag to anyone scientifically literate. According to the Journal of, Manipulati of Manipulative and Psychological Therapeutics, a recent survey of 621 students with a 75.2% response rate attending the Canadian Memorial Chiropractic College, the only English language chiropractic college in Canada, found that approximately 29% of students graduated in the year 2000 with anti-vaccination attitudes, 40% being supportive of vaccinations, with 31% unsure. Further, a 2002 survey of Alberta, Canada chiropractors, many of whom will have graduated from CMCC, found that 27.2% advised patients against vaccinating themselves or their children, end quote. So why is it that many chiropractors view vaccines unfavorably? Well, vaccines hurt their bottom line for one. Less sick people means less business. But it also means that they cannot convince people as easily of the validity of their work. In the same article I just cited, the author argues that cleanliness and diet were the cause of the decline of measles, polio, and smallpox. This is hilarious, considering the standard American diet is so poor in nutrients and high in calories. It also does not make much sense because they claim that there have been major improvements in cleanliness since 1990, and that has prevented many diseases. The improvements made in the last 
30 years are marginal at best. But the sterile conditions that we live in now also tend to cause disease by bulking up superbugs like MRSA. The chiropractic hypothesis on cleanliness eliminating diseases is not at all supported with data to back it up. They claim that many studies show them to be right, but they were all written and published in non-peer-reviewed journals written by other chiropractors. Long story short, chiropractors have no way to study this to begin with, as they are not researchers in the slightest, and they're arguing against something that has been shown time and time again to work. I'm not going to cite anything about vaccines yet, that's going to be its own video, so stay tuned. But back to chiropractic, they spout utter bullshit about subluxations, which is what they say are displacements in the spine that respond to manipulation and are the causes of illness. This has never been found to be true, but they argue that no one needs to know the mechanism if it works. This is not true and outright deceptive. It completely ignores all of the microbiota that cause disease in the first place, like viruses and bacteria and fungi. So it, it's clearly outright deceptive. <clears throat> and if this mechanism does work, we need to know what the mechanism is so that we can test it to see if it's just the placebo effect or if the practice is actually harmful. Knowing the mechanism would allow researchers to precisely test the hypothesis that spine manipulation cures disease. If chiropractors believe that their practice works, then this kind of research and scrutiny should be welcome, right? But the mysticism of chiropractic expands into these odd musings about humans being spiritual beings that are part of a whole, and that we are innate minds in a physical shell. Chiropractors are so convincing to a lot of people because they spend time with their patients, up to an hour, to explain their mystic mumbo-jumbo, and they have an aura of caring and concern, and it sucks people down into the rabbit hole. They use the unsympathetic and business of actual medicine against it to show how chiropractors are different and that they have an answer for everything. They validate the fears and complaints of their patients, which makes the patients feel heard and feel like spending their money to make their complaints go away. This exposes a major flaw with real medicine, to be fair. Doctors are busy and they often don't have time to explain why you don't need antibiotics for the flu. They just write a prescription to get you out of the office so they can see the next patient. They're busy, tied down by a massive bureaucracy, and do not have time to be able to reasonably explain their methods to a curious or concerned patient. Some doctors are better than others, but as a whole, they could do better. Schools could also do a better job of educating students on medicine in K-12 school so they have a better idea about, like, for example, what the flu is and how viruses can be prevented with vaccines and have to be treated with bed rest. Getting back on track, we know that they started as a pseudoscientific venture in predatory mysticism, and they have continued on this path. And now the question should be, how safe is it, and does it work? Well, it does not work. Spine manipulation was studied in a meta-analysis of 197 citations and 7 articles, which showed no difference in pain before and after treatment from a chiropractor. Minor adverse effects are common, such as soreness and stiffness in the area adjusted. In some cases, a chiropractor can also kill you. Yep. They can cause stroke, bone fractures, and sometimes with children, with kids, they even break their neck entirely and kill them. And the scariest part of all this is that the incidence of injury and death is not known. In conclusion, before you go to a chiropractor, just know that physical therapy and massage therapy are more effective at eliminating your pain. 
Massage therapy and yoga are two things that you can do regularly that succeed in decreasing back pain. Sometimes it is only a minor improvement, but that is still loads better than compounding injuries from quacks that don't have any real medical degrees. Please take the time to investigate for yourself the best options for your ailments and choose options that are safer, medically sound, and preferably won't cost you a fortune. All my citations uh, will be down in the description below so that you can see for yourself that I'm not taking anybody out of context. Thank you all for listening, and uh, 